Hi, I'm Patty. Welcome to More Noble. You know, many people are stuck home because of this coronavirus. Um, I know I am. I'm working from home, and really all I do is go out to go to the store to get my essentials. But for the most part, I'm home by myself working throughout the day. And it gets very lonely. Even if I talk to some people on the computer um, for my work, uh, still it's not the same as being around people on a regular basis without a mask or um, just when everything was non-corona. You know, I've been hearing a lot of people. Um, they've been, like I said, stuck at home, isolated from other people. And then you look at the news and there's a lot of really bad things going on, or at least that's what the media is reporting, all of the really bad news. And you know, that instills fear in people and that paralyzes people. Fear paralyzes. And what about loneliness? How many people don't have another person living with them and they're very lonely from being so isolated? You, they can feel hopeless, like there's no hope. Look at all the stuff that's happening in our country. Just no hope. And it leads to depression. And I think of um, families at home. They're around each other so much that they're beginning to fight. What about husbands and wives? You know, maybe this is the first time that they've had this much time in one location together. And now they're getting divorced. I've heard a lot of people getting divorced, um, like celebrities and stuff. And people cope with things differently. Other people are turning to drugs to cope with these. They're turning to alcohol. Um, some people even turn to food and they don't look the same as they did before the coronavirus um, quarantine happened. And then others, sadly, and they've been turning to suicide. The suicide rates have gone up. For Christians, we have God's word and we have the Holy Spirit in us. So we have to remember that and not just turn to the news and not turn to movies to fill your time with or turn to other things. I want to encourage you to use this time to draw closer to the Lord. Another thing that people may be doing, trying to deal with the loneliness and the depression and things like that, you know, they may be seeking a psychologist for counseling. And as a follower of Jesus, I do not recommend this. And even the church has gone from going to the Word of God to going for psychological counseling in an attempt to resolve their problems or get rid of unwanted behaviors. For the Christian, do you believe the Word of God? Well, the Lord has given us um, the power to be able to live the godly life and to not fall into these things. Or if you do fall into those things, there, there's a solution. Second Peter 1, 3, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. But you know, these people, they're relying on these psych psychological theories and methods. And really, they're just a band-aid and they just get you coming back and coming back and coming back. Psychology, its roots, uh, the concepts and the practices come from seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. And we were warned about that in um, 1 Timothy 4.1 that in the last days, people would be turning to teachings like that. They'd be abandoning uh, their faith, not going to the word of God, not going to the Lord, but going to teachings to help deal with things. And, you know, I want to first just give you a little bit of uh, education on psychology. So some of the founders were in the occult or atheists and into spiritism, spiritists, and some of their names are or Wilhelm Wundt in German, uh, Carl Jung, Sigmund Freud, and they had some very strange teachings 
methods. So psychotherapy, for example, it's a modern form of shamanism. And have you ever heard of a shaman or shamanism? Well, basically that's the same methods that they're using uh, by, that the witch doctors used or medicine men or shamans. Uh, shamanism is all about contacting spirit entities uh, to gain help and to gain wisdom, insight, and so forth. You know, a lot of these teachings in psychology will lead people away from the Lord, but to look within themselves for the answers. And again, these methods that they teach and um, they're, they're just not biblical. So if we, if we go to the word of God for everything, why would we turn to a psychologist or psychology, psychology methods? And they're, like I said, a lot of these founders were atheists or into other things and even some really disgusting things if you do your research. If you read in Psalms, in the Bible, it, it's a lot of up and down, up and down. You know, there's highs and there's lows, just like in our lives. And if you just go to the Word of God, really um, help, you'll get help. And in the book of Psalms, always being pointed to the Lord for strength and help. You know, even instead of turning to the psychologists or psychology or try to get these quick fixes, you can even go to other Christians. You know, you think, I don't have anybody, I need someone to talk to. You know, a real true follower of Jesus is just as good at counseling someone, giving good advice, or helping you whatever you're going through than the average person or even going to a psychologist or even taking drugs or alcohol, because what do they do? They're just putting Band-Aids. You know, I, I used to listen to like Dr. James Dobson, oh, the Christian psychologist. It isn't, it's, he just, they just, Christian psychologists and counselors just use Bible verses, but they're using the same methods and techniques and textbooks that psychology teaches. So I would listen to Dame, James Dobson. And when I was raising my kids up, I would take his advice and I had taken some of my children not knowing I wasn't into the Word of God as much and I didn't know the warnings about the roots of psychology so I went just like the whole world does and I think oh well if they're a Christian it'll be better and you know what it didn't help their solution was just keep coming to the counselor and medication and I remember having my son on medication for ADHD and it didn't do anything. He was like a zombie and on dangerous medication. And after a while, I was like, this isn't working. And I think it was like a year or two, I tried different things. I just worked with him. I homeschooled him. I worked part-time, but I, I homeschooled him and I just worked with him. And you know what? It was hard, but I did it. And he's a wonderful young man now. And like for myself, there was a time where I was just going through a weird time and I got depressed. I even went to a doctor and the doctor's like, well, you can try some um, depression medication. And I did. I just felt like it dulled me, dulled, dulled my feelings. It's like, this isn't doing any good. It's just making me weird. So I got off of those right away. One day I really, inside of me, it was just like, I'm just gonna give in to the depression. And it was like, all I needed was one more lump of dirt. I was, and I was, my grave was done. I was just gonna be in the depths of despair. I decided to pick up my Bible. And I can't remember what verse it was, but I just remember it like, it's like the word of God really truly does speak life. And it did, it. the Lord lifted me up through his word by giving me hope and strength and encouragement and got me out of that. But that was just me. I know everybody's different, but I wanna encourage you before you turn to the drugs, alcohol, the food, the, the different psychological therapy out there and stuff like that, get into the Word of God. Really seek the Lord with all of your heart. You know, even some people, um, they'll even turn to things like eating disorders. I know it sounds weird, but it's like these things that you can control, but like things like, I remember having a friend and she was having a problem with that. And I, I started looking into that and I'm like, you're gonna damage your um, esophagus and you, you know, it damages your organs and different things. And I showed her, I, I, I gave her a bunch of stuff 
And that actually wind up, wound up helping her. And I kept talking to her and praying with her and everything. So really go to another Christian. Um, they could help you. Look at Galatians 6, 2 says, share each other's burdens. And in this way, obey the law of Christ. You know, we gotta get better about this in our churches. People just come to a building and leave. Some people are good about having relationships, but you know, not everybody is all doing well. So we need to, first of all, if we're going through something, we need to open our mouths, go get some help from other believers. You know, your family, your friends, somebody, there's gotta be somebody out there. Just take a step. And you know what, if someone's a jerk and they don't get back to you or whatever, then try somebody else. Keep praying, ask the Lord to provide, you know, but keep keep knocking on the doors out there, you know, asking people and eventually there better be somebody out there that will help you through it. And that's another thing, you know, what better way to get through something than to go to someone who's actually been through something or who has come through something. Like I've been married for 30 years. Is it hard? Yes. Is it perfect? No, but you know what? We've made it this far. We've been through some stuff. So like if someone has some, you know, marriage stuff going on, you know, me and my husband, we'd be good ones to talk to. It actually help a lot of people because the Lord has brought us through things and we're always going to point us to the Lord, but we're going to share with them how we went through things. And we're going to be honest and we're not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. And that's loving. You don't need to turn to these things. There is hope. And if you're watching this and you don't follow Jesus, you're not a Christian, I want to encourage you to go and listen to my video, Where Will You Go When You Die? I explain the gospel message there and there is hope. That's on my YouTube channel. Yes, yeah, so make sure you're, you know, not staying inside. Go on out, take a walk. That, that helps too. That's what I've been doing on my breaks because um, I'm working at home. I try to at least get out. At least there's other people around in my neighborhood. And on the weekends, sometimes I go hiking. Today it was 94 degrees. I don't know why I went hiking with my son and I swear I almost died. <laughs> Um, because it was so hot. My face was so red for so many hours. But, um, you know, I feel better now, now that I'm all cooled off and everything. I am glad I did. You even get physically stiff, stiff just sitting around, you know, eating junk or whatever. Hey, use this time to get close to the Lord. Use this time to get close to other people. Get into a church service. If you have a church service that's open, I encourage you to go. A good Bible teaching church. Uh, stay away from psychology, but don't take my word for it. Go and do your research and compare it against the things in God's word. And really, we're supposed to be pointing people to the Lord and, um, and the body of Christ, helping each other through these things, not going to things that are rooted in Eastern religions or just demonic uh, doctrines of demons, because that's where they're getting a lot of their methods from. I will put some resources for you to maybe get you started with um, some links to some places. So um, if you like this video and I help and it helped, you know, send me an email or hit the like button, leave a comment. And um, I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook page and I have Instagram and my YouTube channel and you could subscribe. So I hope this helped and trust in the Lord, stay in his word, rely on him for strength and with other believers. And I will see you next time.